Good morning guys, good morning internet, this is EJ back once again with another narrated art timelapse video. And today we're going to be taking a look at uh, a piece that I did for conceptart.org again. It was uh, one of the prompts from the Daily Sketch Group uh, forum. And I did it way back in 2018, so it's been about a year, a year and a half since the last time I've seen this process video. Uh, aside from editing, of course, I edited fairly quickly and, you know, I kind of browse through the editing process or I browse through the video during the editing process and whatnot. But this would be the first time that I actually got to just sit down and just take a look at this time lapse. So this would be uh, very interesting, of course. Um, as for the artwork, uh, the prompt uh, for this artwork was... Italian motorcade? No, no, no. Let, let me see if I get the, the prompt right. Uh, motorcade, motor, motorcade rushing through Italian countryside was the original prompt. Um, but somehow, for some odd reason, when, when I read the prompt, I, I got the image of rally racing. And oddly enough, this was right around the time that I was playing a lot of rally racing games. So maybe that was the reason why that was the image that came to my head. And so instead of doing a regular motorcade, um, which uh, for people who's not familiar with motorcades, I guess let me explain what that is. Motorcades are typically like a, a group of cars that... Um, has the same destination and they're all going to the same destination and they kind of just pretty much follow each other like a train so uh, the more popular motor gates that most people see are uh, funeral motor gates actually yeah when everyone is going from the church to the graveyard where the person is going to get married it's just a bunch of cars following the um the hearse or uh the car that has the casket um another mo uh, another example of motorcade would be like the presidential motorcade uh when the president of america goes visit the country uh or a senator in a different country typically there's like a motorcade that goes along with him all his secret service and staff members are together with him in a bunch of cars yeah, da, 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 da. so that's what a motorcade is it doesn't typically signify a race but somehow for some odd reason i thought of rally racing so yeah that's how i came up with this image um but the unique thing about this image is that instead of just doing like regular old rally racing, you know, you having your typical race cars, I wanted to be a little bit more advanced, a little bit more futuristic. And so instead of having cars, I decided to do hover bikes. Um, where I got the idea from hover bikes, or where the, I, where the idea of the hover, hover bikes, I, I'm not sure where that came from. Um, but I'm glad it came from somewhere. <laughs> uh, I'm sure, you know, just seeing it from other shows and other artwork and whatnot. I mean, I've, everyone's seen what a hover bike is. Uh, so it's not that much of, of a stretch for me to think of it. But, you know, what I, what I mean, what is strange is for me to think of hover bikes instead of cars. But yes, <laughs> so now that I've fully explained where my idea came from, how this artwork came about, um, let's start talking about the process. Um, so at the beginning of the video, which um, we missed, I did two initial sketches. One which is very, very similar to this sketch right here of like a village or like a little town. Um, in a mountainous hillish or uh in like a countryside that has like hills basically um so i had the image of this or i sketch out the image of this and then i did another sketch which i completely forgot that i've done a second version of a sketch um so i could have something to compare with and whatnot uh, but yeah, the second sketch is like top down. It was an interesting angle. I actually would have wanted to see where that would have gone. 
uh, but then at the same time, this particular sketch is also just as cool because of the houses that is in it. I, I thought that that the house design and how they were situated in this hill is kind of unique. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I guess both sketches would have been interested or would have been interesting to see. Um what the final product would have been like. I mean, well, I know what the end product of this particular sketch looks like, but seeing the end product of that other sketch would have also been just as interesting is what I'm trying to say. Uh, so, yeah. Now, to talk real quick about uh, the sketch, I ran into some problems when I, uh, when I was trying to finalize this uh, a much cleaner version of the my line art. Uh, initially, uh, you saw me try to do like a perspective grid of some sort uh, to kind of try and help me with some of the perspectives. And the perspective grid was great when I was creating the buildings. Um, it helped a lot. Uh, it helped me figure out what to do with my grids. But as for the rest of the scene, it actually didn't feel like it helped a whole lot um, because the problem was the area where the audience is which is right now it's on the right side but um when i flip the mirror version over it will end up being on the left side uh but the perspective didn't really help me drawing the rest of the scene because it's a hill and the hill is not on a flat ground and so everything's kind of like angled like in different angles so really perspective wise the only thing that really does make sense is just the buildings and so eventually i had to shut off like the perspective grid because it was throwing me off like horribly like horribly horribly and so um you saw me take it take it out so i remember that that was like one of the issues that was i was kind of having problems with and then after I drew the buildings, the buildings that I drew like went by real quick, went by real fast. But then when I tried to sketch everything else, I kept erasing and redoing everything just because of the perspective. It was really throwing me off. So, um, but yeah, um, eventually it got to a point where I kind of liked things. Um, like this part right here, I'm beginning to like. The initial sketch of the road I didn't like because it felt like it was too curved and it was too loopy and it just it didn't feel right in a way but um eventually I got myself situated I got myself all corrected and I'm beginning to color things in uh, which is what you see me do um, so once I start out this coloring process, typically I have this issue with the color, with my initial color layer being too light, uh, not having too much depth because of the transparency on the brush. If I had the transparency turn on the brush, uh, the colors end up looking more like watercolor uh, rather than um, thick gouache like opaque style of color which is what I would have preferred so typically what I would do is I would duplicate my initial color layer the one with like the waterish version not this particular version we're looking at right now because this one got really opaque color wise but typically what I would do is I would duplicate that color layer and then merge them into one which I think is what I did here then as soon as I have that you know more opaque version more vivid version then um, what I did with this particular illustration is that I did a few multiply layers. I think I did a mo few multiply layer layers and a few color dodge layers to kind of, you know, create this contrast on the light area and the dark areas of the painting and to kind of help focus the viewers, uh, on what to look at, which in this particular instance really the focus is on the lead racer which we see right now on the left um i flip my illustrations when i'm working because it helps me uh, get a fresher view of things and so right now i'm on the flip version but typically this would 
I, I intended for this illustration to be on the reverse side where uh, the lead racer is actually on on the right side but the focus is the the lead racer that we see we don't see right now actually and so i basically have a shaft of light hitting that area so like my idea basically is that maybe it's like a cloudy day or not necessarily like a cloudy day but there's like this cloud that's like blocking the the sun and it cast the shadow on some parts of the landscape but like the part where the lead racer is is totally lit so you know i, I kind of intended the lightning situation to be like that so that it would help focus the viewers into looking at him um i did make a mistake though um in this initial first few sketches um and that mistake has to do with my color choice for the lead racer. Uh, the color choice that I have chosen for him is blends too much with the background. It's too warm a color, um, which is similar to the colors that's already around him. That he really kind of just melts into the background almost. You know, even when I, you know, have this light kind of like hitting him and the shaft of light kind of concentrated on him it still kind of you know makes him blend in too much and so in the final illustration you see that the lead eraser is actually baby blue not this pinkish color because i will switch him out uh, i will switch out the hues and do a hue correction on him like towards um the end of the video actually you know what i didn't get that part of of the process um so yeah at the end of this video you actually won't see me switch out the lead racers colors at all throughout this video process because i didn't get the chance to record it but that was one of the things that i did uh, at the very end of the illustration as well as a few other edits that i didn't get the chance to record which i will explain later um but so yeah um so that's the lighting schematic or the lighting scheme that i've come up with i've thought of you know uh, a light kind of hitting the lead razor and parts of the house the villages uh behind him is also kind of lit um so yeah now as soon as i have all my colors in um I started kind of smudging things around and bludging or uh, blending things in, um, which is kind of like my standard mode of operation, my MO. And when I do this process, when I do the smudging, I'm really careful not to just smudge like crazy. You know, like my intent for the smudging is to kind of create recognizable shapes. Um, uh, well, there's two reasons. Well, there's multiple reasons is why I do this. Aside from you know getting like that painterly look, um, well, that is one of the reasons. The other reason is that I kind of try to blend out the the black outlines. It's another reason why I do the smudging. And really, the main reason why I do the smudging too is to get a good base for me to do my details upon, which I think I've mentioned this numerous occasions before in my in my videos. Um, but yeah, so the smudging process really, like my whole intent and my whole goal is to get like this really good base for me to paint on. And when I do my smudging, I really, really careful about it. You know, like uh, I, I wanna retain the, the shape of what I'm smudging. Um, a good example of that is the area of where I'm working with right now. Right now, um, I'm smudging the mountains in the background, but I'm actually wanting to highlight the other racer, the second person, the second racer, or the second in place racer. Um, I already smudged him a while back, actually, like a lot earlier, a few minutes ago. But if you look at him right now, even though I had smudged him and kind of blended him 
he's still in this recognizable shape. Now I could have had the choice of making my brush bigger and like really blending him out to where he's almost gone. But I'm really careful not to do that. Um, because I want to retain the shape and kind of give an idea of him being there. Um, so yeah. Um, so my whole point in speaking that or in talking about that is that I have this intention of retaining the shape even though I'm kind of destroying the shape in a way because this is what smudging and blending does is that it kind of destroys what you kind of lay down in a way you know and even though I'm really destroying it I'm really just kind of just trying to get this recognizable shape while I'm destroying it so that I could rebuild it back up and redetail it in a way um because really that's kind of like my process in a way where it's like I have this image and I try to make it beautiful and then once I get into a semi-beautiful state I destroy it again and then rebuild it back up to another beautiful state and then destroy it again and then rebuild it back up and so on and so forth it's kind of like my layering process and the reason why I do it is because it for me I feel like it makes a richer picture in a way so but yeah, um, so yeah, I've actually, I'm done with this munching process and now I've actually been detailing, um, which again, um, as I've mentioned before, you know, detailing is just pretty much me, uh, accentuating the shadows, adding the highlights and delineating my edges, you know, um, since I've smudged things out into recognizable shapes, sometimes those edges get all weird and funky so i kind of have to redefine it in a way and which is what i'm pretty much doing for now you know this is again like i mentioned before my zen process this is the part where things kind of get fun because i try i'm beginning to slowly rebuild the image again to this clear idea of what things are so this is always fun you could see me do that right now in this guy's helmet and you can see it slowly form into shape and get clearer, you know, when I'm adding all these things, all adding the highlights and the shadows and just defining the edges. So, yeah, this is the fun part.
so the detailing process is pretty much close to being finished um so um i guess i could just pretty much just tell you guys the parts that did not get recorded in the video so the parts that did not get recorded uh, during the recording process is me switching the lead racer into blue i changed his hue so instead of him being pink he ended up becoming blue uh, which really helped a lot. It really popped him out uh, out of the background and helped solidify him uh, as the focus. The other thing that I added was motion blur, which was kind of tricky because I had to cut up parts of the image into different sections. And basically those different sections got different um, blur effects. Some got more, some got less. Um, and whatnot and that also helped focused in on the lead racer so yeah those were pretty much two of my big edits it didn't really last for that long it went fairly quick slightly complicated but it went fairly quick and so yeah i just added blur and turned the lead racer into blue and that was it thank you so much guys for watching this video with me uh, we'll definitely see you guys in the next video. Good night.